follow me over here. We're at TFNN.com, okay? I'm going to go over here to the newsletters tab. Now, first thing, we have the Tiger Forex Report, and that's by Teddy Kexat. This is released every Monday. It is a weekly publication, and it goes over a ton of great things, right? If you are a Forex guy, you're trying to get into it, or you've been in it for a while and just like being fully aware of everything going on, now this is the newsletter for you. I can't stress that enough. And furthermore, come over to services, and we have two webinar archives from Teddy Kexat as well. Now, this first one is capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. And this other one, and this seriously, if you are a you know new trader, okay, this Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies, phenomenal. You know, even even if you're well versed with Japanese candlestick patterns, uh, you've got to check this out. And you know, at 97 bucks, I mean, these are steals. Seriously, you get access to these for the rest of your life, for as long as you subscribe to it. Now, I believe we have Teddy Kekstat on with us currently. Teddy, how are you doing? Good morning, Jacob. It was nice to see Tommy for a little bit of a segment there. Absolutely it is. It, we're really happy to hear from him. So, mm -hmm. Well, Teddy, what are we taking a look at today? I want to say, too, uh, I think we have the webinar in the works as well. Now, that's we still got some work to do onto it, but I want to put that out for everyone as well. We have something cooking up with you, Teddy. I'm looking forward to that. We do. We do. We're going to come up with a uh, live trading, probably, most likely a Monday segment. It's probably the best Perfect. time to have a, a Forex uh, live trading event. So, uh, yeah, we're going to set it up for probably a two, three hour window a couple times a month and uh, see how people uh, react to it. So it'll be li all live action, live trading. We'll be breaking down the markets and ask, answering questions to whoever is uh, signed up for the webinar. So yeah, we'll be combing the uh, FX markets and derivatives markets during those hours of trading. And I, actually I love that. Implementing and breaking down trades, whether to or to not take certain trades. Totally. And, and like I said, you know, one I want to say, I, Forex, this it has this image, right? Uh, and I, I will say like online, but online is, is where all the conversation is now, right? And people right. want to get into Forex and they want to trade it. Uh, and it's just hard to know where to start. You know, and that's what I think is so cool about this product and the products you already have. I mean, I have I know nothing about Forex before watching your stuff and reading your letters. It is fantastic. So, anyways, what are we uh, what are we looking at here today, Teddy? Well, I think the interesting thing that's going on right now in the Forex markets is you have a little bit of divergence. You have a stronger dollar index. Uh, the dollar as a whole has been strong versus most of the currency pairs uh, the past few sessions. We'll see how it goes. There's no real numbers this week until tomorrow we have the jobless claims, which most likely will t uptick a little bit. That's expected. Um, if they were to go down um, or be lower than expected, that could cause a nice little uh, hiccup in the market. If anything, that could cause a shift in yields. Um, right now, today, yields are actually ticking up, So, and you still have the dollar gaining strength. So that makes me wonder is if, if you're going to see are, is this just a short-term diversion move and now we're going to just snap back into a range trade? Or if yields start to firm up, is that going to fuel the dollar, um, mm. which, it could, which it could do that? you know. So the question is, are we range bound, like in a tight range, or are we ready to at least um, push the trend, at least for as far as the dollar index is concerned? So and we can talk about a couple of certain currencies, if you like, if yeah, there's anything absolutely. in particular. You just let me know what you'd like to talk about. You know, I'm curious, we were speaking a little bit about um, the yen last uh, sure. week, I believe. I'm curious to see what kind of the updates for that are. Okay. That is a good one. Now, we've had extreme volatility in the Japanese yen uh, US dollar uh, pairing over the past few weeks. It started Big a week time. ago, Friday, and um, had a lot to do with the BOJ. Um, they didn't uh, really do much. Uh, there, there is a rate hike looming out there, but I wouldn't really get too crazy about it as to when it does happen. Uh, but we have had <clears throat> a, a very volatile trade. So we came back to um, last Friday, we hit a, a new higher swing low, if you will, after a crazy week and a half of trading. And this week so far, it's been strong. U.S. dollar yen has been up. It's pushing new move highs on the week right now. And and that's the part that makes me wonder is if, if yields stay soft, mm -hmm. then most likely, especially with crude down, um, that this should be a rally to sell. Right now, it's in a sell signal correction. Um, I think that you really have to get it back above one. If it gets back above 159, and especially if it closes above there, 
Well, that's it's really hard to fight that trend, especially if you start to see an uptick in oil and also an uptick in yields. Uh, but right now, with oil in retreat, still in yep. the corrective mode, and also with yields over the past week and a half of softening, it, it's 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 kind of a tough. It's, it's tough to gauge if we're going to get follow through. So that's why I would pay attention to this divergence and definitely key off that number tomorrow because if you see all of a sudden a big sell-off in the 30-year Treasury bond and the 10-year notes, and especially the short-term end of the curve yeah. where you see a radical move on the morning after that 730 number, I would find it really hard to see the U.S. dollar not get an extended boost, which could bring us to a sell-off, a, a, a spike, which means that you can capitalize off that. Follow that momentum on that number. There's nothing to follow through into Friday, so you could probably capitalize on that exacerbated move and just get, and get out. You know, I would say not. Don't try and trade at, the, at that as a swing trade. Take advantage of that momentum. Big time. And, you know, you, you bring up oil as well. I was talking mm -hmm. at the beginning of this, you know, we have the light Sweden contract down, you know, actually quite substantially. We're at 77.68 in this yes. corrective mode, you're saying. You know, mm -hmm. there are some fundamental things at play here, right? We're producing a lot more. You have OPEC Plus saying they will compensate for any loss that Russia is experiencing. What are you looking at, at least regarding, let's say, the monthly term uh, on light Sweden crude? Okay, that's a great question. Well, we definitely have fallen on some really good support. Uh, the, the crude oil market's been trending lower for the past couple of weeks. You really haven't seen it at the pump, but you're definitely seeing it in the crude yeah. futures yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know. So um, now, as far as those factors that you brought in, uh, the fact that yields have been softening that helps to reduce the cost of carry, which helps to make crude bearish. Yep. Um, I think that influence is there. Uh, so that once again, I think yield is a big has a big part of it. If you start to see them uptick, that could help to set a floor in oil. I, I don't see us getting much lower than where we're at. I think that if we if we fall in below 75 bucks, I think 73 and a half is about as low as you're going to go. Um, and that'll be a basing of a range. And that's if we really have all this support. But with what's going on in the world, I wouldn't get to I would not try and fix a long term scope on that kind of a trade. I'd still be a, a buyer of dips than a seller of rallies in crude right now. You know, it's just it's too likely that especially we're coming into summertime, summer demand. Totally switch over. You know, like there's totally. there's so many other fundamentals that are about to kick in that have absolutely nothing to do with geopolitics sure. or anything like that. You know? So and unless all of a sudden people are gonna not go anywhere this summer, you know, I mean <laughs> it's it, well it, it which could happen but not with with gas where it's at if it gets another dollar higher yeah then people aren't going to travel you know so definitely teddy thank you so much i mean it's amazing how in a short segment you know i can learn so much from you so i really appreciate <laughs> it we're Chico. looking forward to getting everything set up for you folks stay tuned we'll be right back yeah this summer